The Attorney General and the Advocate General for Scotland have referred questions to the Supreme Court in respect of two bills passed by the Scottish Parliament earlier this year. The United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child Incorporation Scotland Bill and the European Charter of Local Self-Government Incorporation Scotland Bill. Both bills are designed to give effect in Scots law to international treaties to which the UK is a signatory, but which have not been incorporated into the law of the UK. Uh, those are the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, uh, the UNCRC, and the European Charter of Local Self-Government, the ECLSG. There is no dispute about the Scottish Parliament's decision to incorporate the UNCRC and ECLSG into Scots law. That's recognised to be a matter for the Scottish Parliament. The references reflect concerns only that the manner in which the bills seek to incorporate the UNCRC and the ECLSG into Scots law would breach limitations imposed on the legislative competence of a Scottish Parliament by the Scotland Act, which established it. The Supreme Court unanimously decides that four provisions of the UNCRC bill and two provisions of the ECLSG bill would be outside the legislative competence of the Scottish Parliament. One of the limitations on the Scottish Parliament's legislative competence arises from Section 28.7 of the Scotland Act, which preserves the power of the UK Parliament to make laws for Scotland. If any provision of an act of the Scottish Parliament purports to modify Section 28.7, it will fall outside the legislative competence of the Scottish Parliament. The Court decides that three provisions of the UNCRC Bill would modify Section 28.7 and for that reason fall outside the legislative competence of the Scottish Parliament. The first is Section 19.2A.2 of the UNCRC Bill, which provides that, so far as it is possible to do so, an act of the UK Parliament must be read and given effect in a way which is compatible with the UNCRC. This would require the courts to give Acts of Parliament a different meaning and effect from those which Parliament intended. That would impose a qualification upon Parliament's legislative power and would therefore modify Section 28.7 of the Scotland Act. The second provision is Section 2010A2 of the UNCRC Bill, which would enable the courts to strike down and invalidate provisions of Acts of the UK Parliament which are incompatible with the UNCRC, where the relevant Act of Parliament was enacted before Section 20 comes into force. Making the continuation in force of Acts of Parliament conditional on their being compliant with the UNCRC would also affect Parliament's power to make laws for Scotland. The third provision is Section 21.5b2 of the UNCRC Bill, which would confer on the courts the power to declare that an act of the UK Parliament is incompatible with the UNCRC, where the relevant act of Parliament was enacted after Section 21 comes into force. Such a declaration would affect Parliament's power to make laws for Scotland, since it would impose pressure on the UK Parliament to amend or repeal the relevant Act to remove the incompatibility, and would also make it difficult, if not impossible, for public authorities to continue to implement the relevant Act, since to do so would be unlawful under another provision of the Bill. A different point arises in relation to Section 6 of the UNCRC Bill, which would make it unlawful for any public authority carrying out any function to act in a way which is incompatible with the UNCRC. It is not in dispute that this provision, on its face, would be outside the legislative competence of the Scottish Parliament.
because it does not reflect the limits on the Scottish Parliament's powers and would apply to authorities carrying out functions which the Scottish Parliament has no power to regulate. Section 6 has been drafted in this way on the basis that the Scottish Parliament can properly enact legislation which does not reflect the limits on its powers and rely on the courts, if and when disputes reach them, to interpret the legislation as being subject to those limits. The difficulty with that approach is that the meaning of Section 6 is clear. To read it as containing the limitations upon the legislative competence of the Scottish Parliament would go beyond interpretation. The courts would be substantially altering or amending what the Scottish Parliament has enacted. And that is something which the courts have no power to do. It is the Scottish Parliament which is the legislative body and it has to frame its legislation within the limits of its powers. The suggested approach would also undermine the system of scrutiny of legislation established by the Scotland Act. That system is designed to check that legislation is within the scope of the Scottish Parliament's powers before it is brought into force. It would break down if legislation which failed to reflect the limits on those powers could subsequently be interpreted by the courts as being subject to those limits. A further problem is that if an act passed by the Scottish Parliament says one thing but can be interpreted by the courts as meaning something substantially different, it then becomes difficult to rely on acts of the Scottish Parliament as meaning what they say. Finally, the court decides that two provisions of the ECLSG bill would also modify Section 28.7 of the Scotland Act and for that reason fall outside the competence of the Scottish Parliament. The first is Section 4.1a, which provides that acts of the UK Parliament must be read and given effect in a way which is compatible with the ECLSG. This would require the courts to modify the meaning and effect of Acts of Parliament, producing results which the UK Parliament did not intend. The second provision of the ECLSG Bill is Section 5.1, which would confer on the courts the power to declare that an Act of the UK Parliament is incompatible with the ECLSG. For the same reasons as this corresponding provision of the UNCRC bill, this would affect the, power of the Scottish, affect the power of the UK Parliament to legislate for Scotland. It would therefore be outside the legislative competence of the Scottish Parliament. The result of the court's decision is that the bills will now return to the Scottish Parliament so that these issues can receive further consideration. <laughs>